Hello, hello, hello. <clears throat> oh, my bad, my bad, I'm shaking up the place. Okay. Hello and welcome to Make it, make it Plain slash Alfonso Speaks. Uh, and I would like to have a conversation. Um, <clears throat> I'd also like for you to, to call in and interact with this conversation as well. Um, this is kind of an open conversation. There is something that I'm going to explain first, and then we're going to open the conversation. Um, and I also have the, uh, the phone number there for you to call if you want to participate. First of all, let me know if you can hear me. Can you hear me? Uh, just... Just type in anything to let me know you can hear me. Give me some kind of sign that you can hear me. One of the reasons why I'm on so late, I had planned on coming on at 9 o'clock. But um, YouTube, for whatever the reason, would not uh, acknowledge my camera. So... <clears throat> So I couldn't go live on YouTube. So you can hear me just fine. What's up, Scott? And, uh, <laughs> okay, good, good. Y'all can hear me. All right, all right, all right. So one of the things I said, <clears throat> I've been posting a lot of comments about a lot of things <laughs> associated with what's going on in the last few days. And one of my comments was, that um, basically saying, what are black people going to do since the entertainment and servants businesses are closed down? The, the, the we, we can be no longer entertainers and servants. And I did say that as it relates to um, what are we going to do since we can't be entertainers or servants anymore? And I wanted to first explain that because I know it was um it it, it was kind of when I was typing it I wasn't really thinking about it because I was thinking only in terms of what my thoughts about that was, but I didn't think in terms of people receiving it in a um, in a uh, offensive manner. So of course some people were offended. And I got a whole list of things that people were sharing with me as it relates to the prominent kind of work that they, you know, and their family members might do. So um, I'm going to explain myself. There's a context in which I spoke about what are black people going to do since there are no more jobs for entertainers and servants. Now, when I explain myself, it's just to help you understand why I said that. However, um, it's okay if you don't understand me because, you know, we all see things a little differently. So, what I meant when I said that is this. There's always a context and a perspective as it relates to how people feel about things and what people share for whatever their reasons. The context and perspective is this. When we talk about, say, the cornerstone, the cornerstone for why we exist, the cornerstone of our existence, for me, there are three cornerstones and two categories. So the three cornerstones or the, the foundation cornerstone that we move from as it relates to life. The first one is profit, power, and control. 
And when I talk about profit, power, and control, I'm speaking in reference to the fact that that's a foundation that Europeans have created everywhere they've gone all over the world. It's their cornerstone for existence, their foundation for existence, their purpose for existence is profit, power, and control. And if you understand that, then you'll understand also why many European men who are multi-millionaires and billionaires will spend hundreds of millions of dollars to acquire a position of power. Because they also understand that when they are in the position of power, they are also in the position of controlling other people. So the foundation, one cornerstone foundation for life is profit, power, and control. And that is the cornerstone or foundation for life that European men seem to move from and seem to have created for their purpose for existence. Again, this is why you have European men who are multimillionaires who in, in their 80s and 90s running for president um, because their cornerstone or foundation for living is profit, power, and control. Now, in the same category that I identify as lifeless living, because profit, power, and control have nothing to do with life. Life is not first. Humanity is not first. The best interest of people is not first. Profit, power, and control is first. So in this same category, it was what I call lifeless living, is the category that most what we identify as African Americans are in. Those who are descendants of the formerly enslaved. Now, this category is a category that's a byproduct, a byproduct of the enslavement of African people. This particular cornerstone or life foundation only exists because we are functioning with a consciousness created by white people during the European enslavement of African people. And so this second cornerstone foundation for life is in the first category of lifeless living, again, which is understanding life, I mean, which is um, profit, power, and control. That's lifeless living. And this cornerstone for life that we operate by as formerly enslaved Africans, we identify ourselves some as African Americans. This cornerstone for life is, is what we function by. And it is Competition, conflict, and confrontation, a struggle to overcome, and a need and desire to be validated by white people. Now, this is the cornerstone and life foundation that African Americans move from. Competition, conflict, and confrontation, a struggle to overcome, and a longing need and desire to be validated by white people. And so again, I call this a lifeless cornerstone because it has nothing to do with life. It has nothing to do with what living is really about. And so the third cornerstone or life foundation is the one that I believe that we come from as African people and the universal life foundation that we formerly moved from was understanding life, preserving life, and improving the quality of life for the whole. That is the cornerstone and life foundation that we once moved from as ancient people, okay? Now, I gave you three cornerstone or life foundations and two categories. One was category was lifeless and the other one was about life. The two categories that are lifeless 
cornerstone and foundation for life is profit, power, and control, which is the foundation most European men move from. And then the enslaved cornerstone of life foundation, which is competition, conflict, and uh, com uh, competition, conflict, and confrontation, a struggle to overcome, and a need to be validated by white people. And we spend our entire lives in this particular cornerstone or foundation for life. Those are two lifeless cornerstones and foundation to move from. And the third one is what I call a, 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 um, one that moves from a foundation of life. It's understanding life, preserving life, and improving the quality of life for the whole. Now, this is a wonderful, life-affirming foundation, this third one, or in this second category, life affirmation. And the other category is lifeless. And those first two descriptions fulfill the lifeless category. And this third one, understanding life, preserving life, and improving the quality of life, fit in the life affirmation category. Now, when I said that what are black people going to do since entertainers and servants are no longer working, if we are operating... If we are operating in a lifeless category, which is profit, power, and control, and co uh, uh, competition, conflict, and confrontation, struggle to overcome, and the need to be validated by white people, those are lifeless foundations. Then when we're operating from those lifeless foundations, the only thing we can be is entertainers and servants. That's it. Entertainers and servants. Even if you are, uh, you're a doctor or you have some big special degree or whatever, if your life cornerstone and foundation is lifeless, then you're nothing more than a servant for the system. That's all we can be is servants for the system or entertainers for the system. Now, the reason why that's significant is because historically, no matter what we hear today, and this is according to me, this is not necessarily the truth, but this is based on my own limited understanding of things, you know, reading and using my mind and thought process to develop an understanding. Historically, we did not do anything for art or entertainment purposes. Now, people who came in and uh, didn't understand what we did and appreciated things that they didn't understand for whatever reason, saw things as art and entertainment. But we never did anything for the sole purpose. We never created anything to call it art. We never did any ceremony for entertainment purposes. Everything can, everything we did was connected in some way to life affirmation. Everything we did was in some way connected to understanding life, preserving life, and improving the quality of life for the whole. So this idea that we're all of a sudden entertainers and great artists, and that's cool. But all I'm saying is just understand that when we moving from a life affirmation place, entertainment is art, is how people who don't understand how and why we move see what we're doing. And that's what they call it. And so you go to Africa and you see the different masks and you see the different dances and you see the drumming and you see all of these things. And it is now entertainment and it's art. We didn't move for the purpose of entertainment and art. We moved from a foundation, from a cornerstone of life affirmation, understanding life, preserving life, and improving the quality of life. So when you hear me say, what are black people going to do since entertainers and servants are no longer working? 
What I'm saying is if we're operating from a cornerstone of those first two categories or those first two life foundations that I talked about, then that's all we are. No matter how significant our title is, we can be doctors, we can be lawyers, we can be authors, we can be all kind of great things according to that first category. But that first category operates from a foundation of profit, power, and control. And then we, as a result of being enslaved, move from that foundation of, of competition, conflict, and confrontation, struggle to overcome, and the need to be validated by white people. That is not a foundation or cornerstone to move from as it relates to life affirmation. So... I'm suggesting that if we truly want to develop an understanding of our history and begin making history, then we have to move from a cornerstone of life affirmation, which is understanding life, preserving life, and improving the quality of life for the whole. That 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 is, you know, if we're, we're really so interested in... Um, now, Willie says, what about herbalists? If herbalists are moving from a foundation of understanding life, preserving life, and improving the quality of life for the whole, then we are moving from a foundation of life affirmation, and we're not functioning as entertainers and servants. Now, this is just my perspective. If we're not moving from a foundation of life affirmation, then the only thing we can be is entertainers and servants to this system and setup. Scott says the vast majority of what we um, what we do now and what we are attached to is sexually based and rooted. We are more connected to our lower self versus our higher level of consciousness. And Scott, what you're doing is you're confirming what I'm saying. Our lower self <laughs> is that first category. Moving from a cornerstone of, of, of a life cornerstone of Competition, conflict, and confrontation struggle to overcome and a need to be validated by white people. The only thing we can do is be drawn to things that don't support life and what living is actually about or experiencing what living is actually about. So, yeah, we are in that condition. And people were extremely offended when I said, what are blacks going to do since entertainers and servants are no longer working because they didn't understand the context that I'm moving from. And there are people who will still be offended by that, even though I'm explaining the context that I'm moving from, but I also understand that as well. That's just going to happen. We're not going to always understand each other and that's okay. So um, I just wanted to explain that out. <clears throat> Understanding life, preserving life, and improving the quality of life for the whole is a foundation of life affirmation. And that has nothing to do with entertainment. It has nothing to do with art. It has nothing to do with just simply being servants. Uh, it's about life and life affirmation. And so that's what I wanted to explain. And now I just want to like open up the lines and um, and see what you guys have to say and what's on your minds because, of course, there are a lot of things. Uh, there are a lot of things that um, are on folks' minds as we deal with the corona situation. So, um, Scott said, most things actually bring us closer to death, whether it's physical death or spiritual death. I, I wouldn't say most things. I would say things that are not moving from a foundation of life affirmation, understanding life, <laughs> preserving life, 
and improving the quality of life for the whole. That's that's what I would say. So, um, uh, the line the line is open, and I, I'm talking about the lines. I only have one line. The line is open. The number is eight six zero two eight one one six one five. If you want to call in and uh, you have something you want to say, I think it's important that we. Um, I think it's important that we, uh, you know, this is a opportunity for you to talk about what you're feeling as it relates to what's going on. So that's why I wanted to do this. Um, that's why I wanted to do this live stream tonight. So uh, the number 860 2811615 Hello Peace brother how you doing it's Willie from Everything is good man What's flying through the brain The outfit you got on even more that thing is popping Huh Outfit you got on is popping. Oh, thanks a lot, man. Yes, sir. You represent. So what's but on the plane? I wanted to go ahead and uh, sneak in and talk about that coronavirus uh, uh, that's going around. Okay. And what we can do. All right. Put it on the table. Uh, before, gotcha. Before I do, let me go ahead and give a shout out. My condolence to uh, uh, you didn't hear about it. Uh, what well, you did hear about it, Doctor Africa and uh, his transition. Yeah, Dr. Layla Africa. Yes, yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. But uh, that coronavirus, I was just talking to a friend before I called you, and I told her, I myself, I'm a big follower of, as you know, of Dr. Savi. I met him personally myself, and I studied everything that he was doing. And come to an understanding of what he was doing, Dr. Savi was far more knowledgeable and deeper than we give him credit for. Right. Uh, and I would have loved to hear, for him to be around and hear what he said about uh, this uh, coronavirus that's going on. But understanding the coronavirus and seeing all the information that came out so far, the mass media, they give us information, but it's not clear and concise. Mm -hmm. And they don't go ahead and give us uh, the details of what we should really should do about it. So I like to go ahead and throw some things out there on the table concerning that. Uh, to me, there's three things that we can go ahead and do. And one of the best things that we can do, because besides getting an alkaline diet and boost our immune system, that's the key. That's the number one thing that we can do. And the one thing that uh, we can do to go ahead and uh, get that up is use Dr. Savi's Iron Plus. That's Iron Phosphate. The plant-based iron. I uh, used to go ahead and get it from his store out there in uh, Los Angeles, California. Dr. Savi's uh, office, but I got in contact with his uh, second wife, Ma'a. She has the big tree, and the big tree is the first business that he and his wife opened up to do the uh, healing and the curing. She's in Brooklyn, New York, on right. Willoughby Street, on uh, Willoughby Avenue. Mm -hmm. So I get the, my iron from her right now, and I get some other... Uh, herbs number, but iron is the most important one to go ahead and uh, really do what, they have, what we have to do to go and get our immune system up to, to stop this coronavirus. But uh, on top of that, it's a brother online. I think he's a Jamaican brother. Brother's tight. We, we would go ahead and look at him and think he didn't know what he was talking about and take him for granted. But this brother comes with an ingenious idea of boiling water putting sea salt in it, cutting, uh, peeling from, uh, what is it, maybe an orange, tangerine, a lime, a lemon, some kind of, uh, uh, orange, some kind of fruit with vitamin C, the peelings. Right. To boil that along with an onion and just go ahead and snip in that, getting it into your, uh, your sinuses and it's in your throat area for about 15 minutes because that virus can 
cannot go ahead and uh, go through, it cannot last nor survive at 90 degree or above temperatures. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's another excellent idea for us to go ahead and seriously go ahead and uh, try and, 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 and incorporate in our lives. What's so it, these are remedies for people. What's his name? And the third, what's that? What is his name? I don't know the brother's name. But I got I shared on my uh I I'll try, I'll try to work at doing that. But I I shared it twice on my Facebook page. I'll go ahead and send it to you also. Okay. But I'll uh, find his name. Go ahead. Uh, I said okay. But the third thing that I want to go ahead and uh really I mean this takes care of the inside and the outside. Going into a sauna. Now they say this virus uh can't go ahead and live in ninety degree or above weather. And that's why the virus don't thrive in the tropics or in the bounce down in the uh, sub Saharan African countries because it's too hot to go ahead. But people travel so much that it can get there and get on the inside of them. But if it gets on the inside, again, that vapor, I don't know if the person want to go ahead and get the vaping, but to get that vapor in your system and your nostril area and the sinus area to go ahead and kill it, and it will work. Right. But the third thing, which is most key to me, is to get in a sauna. Now, they say that virus can last up to 14 days on your clothes or on, on things like that. But if you get in a sauna and it gets very, very hot there, so it would be killed from your clothes if you go in with clothes. Most people don't. But if you go, it would be killed from your clothes because it's so hot. And it would be killed because you're breathing that hot air. It's so hot that it's going to go and take care of the inside and the outside. These are, these are options that are thrown on the table because they're free. We know that society is based on money. Right. That's all they're about. So any type of option that's going to go and be free that they can't control and put some money in their pocket, they're not going to put out there on the table. And, but we have a tendency, unfortunately, not to go ahead and take us seriously if it comes from a black person, not to believe in ourselves no matter how credible we may be. Right. But I think we better go ahead and uh, reconsider and go ahead and listen to it. go within instead of going without. But those I wanted to go ahead and throw out there and add just for people to go ahead and research this, mm-hmm. research independently, because they're, they're not going to give us the answer. Well, we have to look within ourselves. Scott talked about boiling garlic. What What do you think about that? Uh, boiling what is it? Garlic. Violet. Garlic. Garlic. Oh, garlic. No, garlic is a. Uh, Garlic is acidic. Garlic will go ahead and eat with eat your membranes. Garlic is not the uh, no 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 not garlic. Please don't do it. Just do it garlic. Mm-hmm. The uh, orange peels and those type of things they have the vitamin C in and, and it can't they can't stand vitamin C. Now if you go and get some of, some of the herbs that's on the acidic not acidic but on the alkaline side, right? That's the key. No germ, no bacteria, no disease can thrive nor exist. And an alkaline uh, state, they can. Right. So what, what what people need to do is they need to alkalize their bodies, and that'll go go and take the immune system up. Therefore, it'll kill the virus. But the I always warn people: one of the dangerous things is to go ahead. And you you'll be okay, but if it's on your clothes mm-hmm. and you take go around somebody whose immune system is compromised then you put them in jeopardy and they might be seriously injured or even killed well, let because me, of uh, something that was on you. Let me ask you this. The the thing that threw a whole monkey wrench in, in my thought process, which is is, is when I heard a, a, a medical doctor say, if you are not showing symptoms, don't get tested. <laughs> now, now, when I heard that, it made me feel like somebody is trying to say that this virus is in all of us already anyway. It's just a matter of 
if our immune system is such that we become vulnerable to it or not. And so that, when they said that, that's, you know, that kind of threw a little monkey wrench in my thought process. Because I was saying, why would, why would a, a doctor say if you're not showing symptoms, then don't get tested? When everybody else is saying, even if you're not showing symptoms, you can go and give it to somebody else. Right, and you can go and give it to somebody else, not based on what's inside of you, but based on what's outside of your clothes and things like that. If it's on you and your immune system is good, that's cool. And he may and he may be right to a degree he may be right in which it's not harming you and you don't need to be tested. But I'll, I'll go ahead and say this. They're so overwhelmed in uh, the hospitals and so forth that they can't handle everybody if, if everybody would go to get tested. And truly, it isn't necessary unless you, feel you, you have some of the symptoms coming up. What about this business about melatonin in relation to lung health? Uh, you hear anything about that? No. What did they say? Kick that melatonin in, in relation to what? Lung health. Lung health. Lung health. Lung health. Oh yeah. no, I don't know anything about that. Now, well, well let me well let me ask you this. Um. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> let me ask you this. What do you think about the fact that we get racial breakdowns for everything in the world? About everything. <laughs> but we can't get no racial breakdowns about who is going to meet Jesus versus who's not. What What, what do you think about that? <laughs> Well, who's going to meet Jesus, you said? That means people that are dying. Uh-huh. How come we can't get a racial breakdown of that? What, what, what's up with that? Oh, because it's not us. Because most of us are in the, in the hot areas. Mm -hmm. Most of us as uh, black people, African and Africans in those areas, we're not affected by it because it's just too hot in those areas. Well, what about the cool and, areas? What's that? What about the cool, the cool areas? Well, I never, well, it's not a significant amount for, for them, but uh, that is a very good, for some reason, we're not, we're not affected nearly as much as they are. Now, I did. I know, I, I, we, we do get affected, I, but not well, nearly as much. Yeah, yeah. I did see a study, and I, I want to know what you thought about that. Because it's all kind of stuff. You never know what's fake news and what's real people inboxing you all these recordings and about this is going to happen and that's going to happen and, and sending messages and people sharing messages, this is going to happen and that going to happen. But um, what about um, this idea? I saw, I read something, I read something where uh, Chinese, a, 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 a study the Chinese did talking about it has something to do with blood type and certain blood types were made you more resistant and less likely to die from the virus than other blood types have you heard anything about that yes i did hear about that and it caught my interest because i had then i had to go read up on that do some research on that I really don't see any validation in that because viruses go ahead and uh, viruses, viruses, viruses are, are in us anyway. Mm -hmm. That's our immune system. It's part of what we are. And But uh, I wouldn't put any validation in that. And when Dr. Tavey was alive, I always wanted to go ahead and ask him about uh, eat for, eating for your blood type. Mm -hmm. Someone wrote a book about that. Right. And we are different. The black, black people are original. Blood type is O. Right. O is our original blood type. So, and we are different. As I got to say, we say we're not better, but we're, we're different because when you look at nature, life doesn't express better or worse. It well, expresses differences. Did you read that study or anything about that? Yes, I, I did, but I didn't find any validation in that, dear. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I but I'm going to tell you. Coming from uh, the Chinese, a bias about some of their. 
stuff that they put out anyway. Well, the Chinese. What about what about the Americans? <laughs> uh, you know, it's so funny that you oh, say that. We, we know we're home. But a, oh, okay. a young lady, a good friend of mine, his, his daughter, put out some information on Facebook defending a, uh, Chinese people. And I had to write something that an educating on her. Why is she defending these Chinese people? Chinese people never defended us. Well... Well, now, I, but, but yeah. I'll say it, but Chinese people never defended us, and neither one of them would be Caucasians, Asians, Indians. All of them put themselves above us. They fall within that white superiority type of mindset. I can dig it, but yeah, I you know, I I, I um. I understand you. I hear you on that. Yeah, but I, I had to go ahead. No, but when we go ahead, because we, we're always in situations where I don't care if we go to China. Like that young man that went ahead had a Chinese girlfriend in China. They beat him so bad, they killed him. I think he was from Nigeria. You know what? Now, I'm I'm trying to... I don't want to. I don't want to really get in heavy into the whole racial stuff about how different people treat oh, us. Because at that's the fine. end of the day, they all we have been mishandled by pretty much every nation on this planet. You got it. But everybody. my my focus and see my focus is how we handle each other, and I think right. that you know it's just like a beehive, right? If you see a single bee around the house, you'll smack them around. You'll whack them. You'll kill them. You might see another bee. You'll smack them around, whack them, do what you want, put them in a jar, watch them suffocate, all that kind of stuff. But when you see a beehive, even though you might have a flamethrower, you got all kind of stuff that can knock that beehive out, right? But at the right. end of the day... Everybody <laughs> knows that whatever you do with that beehive is going to be some consequences and repercussions. <laughs> you ain't getting them all. And so what I'm saying is that people smack us around and mishandle us all kind of ways is because we have yet to become the beehive. And the reason why we're not the beehive is because we don't know ourselves. We don't know each other. And we have no interest in knowing ourselves or each other because, again, like I spoke earlier, we're moving from a foundation that is a byproduct of being enslaved, which is competition, conflict and confrontation, struggle to overcome and a need to be validated by white people. That that cornerstone and life foundation will never work in our own best interest and it will never work to help us reconnect with one another. The way we reconnect with one another is from that foundation of understanding life, preserving life, and improving the quality of life for the whole. And somewhere along the line, we're going to have to become, you know, that beehive. But right now, right. we're not. People don't mind. Wherever we are, people are smacking us around. Right, in, right there in Africa, in, um, in, in many Arabic places, Muslim places, we're Muslims, and Arabs are smacking us around and treating us like dirt, even though we're operating in the same religion and all of that kind of stuff, we're, we're trying to be accepted, we practice the same religion, we done changed ourselves over to the point we speak y'all language, <laughs> we pray to the same God you pray to, and they still treat us like dirt. My point is that that's going to always be the case as long as we aren't unified from a solid cornerstone and life foundation. And that cornerstone and life foundation that I'm suggesting is understanding life, preserving life, and improving the quality of life for the whole. That is our I, universal life foundation. That's where we came from. So we I can... I agree with you, but I don't think we'll... We, we haven't recovered it. I don't think we will recover until we go ahead and... Uh, until we start educating ourselves. Well, well, there are a lot of reasons why we won't recover. 
But we, mm-hmm. we there's no need to promote reasons why we won't won't recover. That's what I'm talking about tonight. Ways that we can recover, how we can recover, what we can do to recover. When you talk about health, what we can do from a health standpoint to recover ourselves, what we can do from a mental and spiritual standpoint to recover ourselves, what we can do from a philosophical standpoint to recover ourselves. That's what I'm talking about, you know, and that's what I, that's that's where it's at. But. Unless we go ahead and get out there like those Amish and get away from these people because we respect them, like you said, about the validation piece. Mm-hmm. We want their validation. We just love, admire, respect. We're trying to be like them too much. To me, we have to go ahead and almost like isolate ourselves and to truly recover to go ahead and do what you're, trying, you're saying. Well, see, I don't believe that. I understand what you're saying, but I don't believe that. We are we we are so freaking incredible. And what I'm saying yes, is are. when when we're a moving from a universal cornerstone and foundation for life, then it doesn't matter where we are. We can make it happen. That's why we are matter of fact, the the example of what I'm talking about in reverse is the fact that everywhere we're colonized, we have become culture chameleons where we have totally taken on the colonizer's language and way of life. We can be the most blue, black, Negro in Sweden. And we're in Sweden talking about we Swedish. And we talking the language and living the whole cultural lifestyle and reality of the Swiss. So what I'm saying is, because we are this incredible universal people, it doesn't matter. We don't need to isolate and separate. All we need to know is what we're doing. <laughs> that, that, is the, that is the ultimate key. We need to know what we're doing. And the other thing, too, is this idea of isolation and separation I used to hear from the Nation of Islam always talking about we need to separate. And I never, ever, ever heard a plan for separation. Like... What what are you going to do? Ask the people who you got a problem with to give you some land for separation? It's, oh, no, to me, no, understand no, something. No, what, hold it, hold it. Wait, wait. Wait, let me, let me, let me make my point. What, okay. what I'm saying is this, that it would take way more work to be running around here trying to separate then it would be for us to recover our consciousness and understand we have the power to be and do what we need to do wherever we are on the planet. Because, like I said, we already have a reverse example. Everywhere we are on the planet, it's two things that 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 help me understand this. Number one is, like I said earlier, everywhere we are on the planet where we've been colonized, we have totally adapted to the colonial way from the language to the food to the culture to the accent to the whole way of life the other thing that tells me this is that everything we do resonates throughout the world the greatest singer in spain is known in spain the greatest dancer in 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 uh Switzerland is only known in Switzerland. My point is, everything we do, the entire world embraces it, finances it, makes money off it, and we affect everybody. The culture you talked about earlier, Asian culture, Chinese culture in particular, Japanese culture, hip-hop, is 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 they about to take over hip hop in a minute, and and so 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 what I'm saying is what we do resonates worldwide. That's why we don't need to run around trying to separate as much as we need to run around, you know, run in our own mind and recover our consciousness in our way of life from a universal standpoint. Yes, sir. Understand you. I agree, I agree with you a lot, but I disagree. What you're saying, we resonate everywhere, wherever we go, we dominate, but we still don't control any of that. We don't control what? We, 
The only thing we, we need to control, control is ourselves. The only thing we need to control is America, ourselves. We don't control nothing. We, we dominate the sports. We dominate entertainment, but we don't control nothing. Why we don't even control our mind. Willie, my brother. What's that? You're talking about that first category again. What I'm saying is, what do we need to control that for? If we're moving from a cornerstone of life affirmation, understanding life, preserving life, and improving the quality of life, we have never been entertainers historically. That is their world. That is that their category, profit, power, and control. That's the category of profit, power, and control. Okay. And then what I'm saying to you, my brother, is that is the challenge for us to understand and know the difference. We, our goals and desires cannot be the same as theirs unless we're moving from the same lifeless foundation. I agree with you. So we don't, the idea that we don't, con, the idea that we don't control basketball or football or baseball or, or the idea that we don't control the entertainment industry and music. Or education what, or religion. Again, or again, ag again, Willie. Why would we want to control that which comes from a lifeless foundation, bruh? Why, okay. why would we okay. want to control that which comes from okay. a lifeless okay. foundation? I agree with you there. But well, we Willie, don't, don't Willie, control, control Willie. Our, our, our okay, so that. now there we go. Let's talk about that. Controlling ourselves. That goes back to profit. I mean, that goes back to understanding life, preserving life, and improving the quality of life. There we go. Now now we're talking, because that's what it's going to boil down to, us getting some control over ourselves. So we have to control our education and the schools and things like that. What's put in our... No, 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 no. Back it up. Again, education in the schools is that lifeless foundation. We'll never control the education in the schools. We have no business being interested in controlling the education in the schools. We, we, ha we shouldn't be interested in controlling anything that moves from a lifeless foundation. Profit. Okay, so how are we going to go ahead and get, the, how are we going to get educated on this lifeless, lifeless found, uh, life foundation? So who we, move, put it in? we move, we begin understanding how to move from that foundation of understanding life, preserving life, and improving the quality of life. If education was built around understanding life, we would first be learning to understand ourselves. How do we understand ourselves? How do we understand our bodies? Like the other day, I made a list of certain key organs in the body and I'm looking and I'm trying to understand how these organs work and how these organs function. Not only do I want to understand my body physically, I want to understand it mentally. I want to understand it spiritually. I want to understand it emotionally. This is what this is this is what what life is about. So we begin understanding life from the standpoint of understanding ourselves. One of the most powerful thing about understanding life is that the better we understand ourselves, the more compassion we have for others because we understand certain things that they're going through when we know it, when we recognize it, when we see it because of our own experiences. One of the, the, the greatest things that we breed out of understanding self is compassion for others because we understand self. Understanding life, preserving life. What is preserving life? What you always talk about, preserving our health eating alkaline foods, what Dr. Sebi was talking about, preserving our life mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, taking control over our mindset so that we don't allow outside things to determine how we feel from one minute to the next. These are the kind of things that represent preserving life and then improving the quality of life for the whole. The thought process and what we're doing like you do, share information about eating healthy and the alkaline diet, this is all about also improving the quality of life for the whole. So when we do things, when we produce things, when we're thinking, the foundation we're moving from is that life affirmation foundation, understanding life, preserving life, and improving the quality of life for the whole. Now, the question when we make a move is that we ask is, does this contribute to understanding life, preserving life, and improving the quality of life for the whole? 
N this educational system doesn't do that. This entertainment system right, doesn't right, do right. that. None of these things you keep mentioning do that. So that's why I'm trying to help you see the difference. You dig right, what I'm saying? Now, two, two key questions there then. Yes, sir. If we pull away the, from the educational system, who's going to go ahead and teach us that? How are we going to lose to us? Because Hold we it. can't be self-taught. Hold it. Wait a minute. I didn't say... And that's one. And how do we survive in the meantime? Because we got to pay bills. we got to do this. We want to need and things. How do we go about doing that? First, firstly, I never mentioned anything about pulling away from the educational system. I said understanding the educational system as it is, is not moving from a cornerstone of life affirmation. So now, right. one of the things that we have the amazing ability to do, which is, a, a, this is another part of, of, of this universal understanding of life. There is a universal approach to life that goes along with this life affirmation cornerstone of understanding life, preserving life, and improving the quality of life. Now, this universal approach to life says it is our responsibility to look around and understand how the reality we are in works. You can't survive in space you can't survive in the forest. You can't survive in anywhere on the planet without understanding how the reality works. Now, whether it's, right. even if it's in the forest, even if we so-called have our own land and we were separated and all of this stuff, we would be required to understand how the reality around us works. So we are in a particular reality here in America. And this reality is functioning a certain way based on the so-called Constitution of the United States of America. And it is our responsibility to understand how this thing works. Now, once we get the best understanding we can as it relates to how this thing works, the next step is to decide what we want from this reality. What do we want from this reality based on the reality of how it works? Now, you cannot look at this reality and say, well, it shouldn't be this and it shouldn't be that. And it's not supposed to be this and it's not supposed to be that. Because as soon as you do that, then now you're in denial. Because it doesn't matter what it should or shouldn't be. When we're trying to understand how the reality works, we have to go by what it is. What it is, how is it working, what it is, not what it should be or what is not or what it's supposed to be. So this universal approach to life says we have to understand the reality we're in. We have to decide what we want from that reality. And then we have to use our brilliance to figure out how to make that reality serve our best interests. That is our responsibility. That is the definition of freedom. You can operate from this universal life foundation in a prison cell and be free and be more free than anybody walking out here on these streets. And I'll tell you exactly how. If you are in prison for life and you are in a cell for 24 hours, 23 hours out the day, you apply that universal approach to life and deal with the reality associated with it. The first step is how does this reality I'm in works? Okay, I'm in prison. I'm in the cell 23 hours out the day. Can I read? Can I draw? Can I write? What can I do? Can I exercise? We have to assess this thing and find out, can I get educated? Can I work towards a degree. What can I do based on how this reality works? Now, once I assess it and I determine what can and can't be done and how this reality works, the next question is, what do I want? Well, I want to earn a degree. I want to do some drawing. I, I want to write a book. These are things that I'm able to do. Now, once I decide what I want based on how this system works, the next Step is to now, I know what I want. This is how the system works. 
How do I make this system serve my best interest? That's freedom. I don't care what the ancestors said about freedom or anybody else. That is what freedom is. When we can apply that universal approach to life and, and make this reality serve our best interest. So it is not about pulling the kids out of school. It's not about, well, I don't want to work no job and I don't want to work for the white man and all that other stuff. It's not about that. The brilliance that is available in us is such that wherever we are on the planet, we can make it serve our best interest. That is why it's called a universal approach to life. And that is why that is what true freedom is about. That's what freedom is, that universal approach to life. So when you put that universal approach to life together with that universal life foundation, that cornerstone of life affirmation, that's where the power is. That's where the power is for us. So I know we've been taught that we got to have 10 demands and we got to call for separation and we are not supposed to work for the white man and all that other stuff. But that's really not what it's about. One more thing that I want to add to that is this. Historically, we never did anything based on race. We did everything based on life affirmation, understanding life, you preserving you life. Me while we're here in America. Willie, let me finish. We now and I and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let you respond because I know you feel differently. And then people who are listening can determine what makes best sense to them. So I'm not in protective mode against what you're saying. You don't have to be in protective mode against what I'm saying. The people can decide for themselves what works for them. So what I'm saying is we never moved from a race-based foundation. And when we talk about doing something based on race, we're operating that lifeless space. We're operating in that lifeless space I talked about. We're restricting ourselves. We're limiting ourselves. Anytime we get ourselves or keep ourselves caught up in race-based thinking, we're joining the race-based creators on a speck of dust and withdrawing from the entire universe what is ours. We're withdrawing from the universe and joining race-based creators on a pinhead of a, a speck of dust in the sand in the universe and we're just removing ourselves from life. So if we want to claim that we want to recapture our history and reconnect with our historical foundation, then we have to um, somebody We have to, uh, hold on one second, Will. All right? Uh, uh, all right. Hold on. Call from McLovin. To accept, press 1. To send a voicemail, press 2. Hello? Hi. Hey, how you doing? Can you call me right back? I got Brother Willie on the other line, and we're about to finish up. I got to let him respond to what I'm saying. And, and can you call right back? Sure All right, thanks. All right, Will, you there? Yeah, I'm still here. Okay, so what I was saying is that um, we, we claim we want to recapture our history, but we want to still operate based on race. And historically, we never operated based on race. We operated based on understanding life, preserving life, and improving the quality of life. And as long as we operate from race-based thinking, then we continue to be vulnerable to race-based creators and people who create race-based issues. So again, America doesn't have to define us. America's standards don't have to be ours. American life doesn't have to be our way of life. American life is uh, entertainers and servants. That's American life. So it's up to us to make a decision what kind of life we want to operate on. 
All right, Will, go ahead. Handle your business. Man, you took so long. I don't go ahead and forgot about some of it. But I think we think well, about... Well, one of the things that... One of I the think things we're talking about the same thing, but I think we got to define it in different ways and have different perspectives on it because a ninety percent of the things that you say I, I agree with. Now of course some things I don't. Now the race based thing is when we us not operating on race race based, since we were pulled in here based on race based, we have to go ahead and deal with that. To me. And and not dealing with that is go ahead and ignoring the reality of it. And of course, we don't want to have to deal with it. It's, 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 to me, it's a Bible. We don't want to have to deal with this race bull crap. We don't. But in order to survive, we have to deal with it. And I don't think we'll. To, to me, what you're saying is remember the bear on the bicycle thing that you have. The bear in that circus will never be a, truly a bear until it gets out there in the wild and be really what it's supposed to be. That's freedom to it. And to, to me, America is our circus. Of course we've adjusted and, and, like you say, doing some entertaining and doing this and that. But we still in this circus and we cannot be the full Africans that we're supposed to be in this circus because we're not truly free in the sense of uh, of course, when you describe freedom, you, you're saying, okay, look at what you have, look at the uh, limitations, look at what you can do and what you can't do, and what best to adjust for your life for what you got right there. And I can I can agree with that. But with, with that, you, to a person that's in there would say, I don't have freedom until I get out of here, but I have to adjust and cope while I'm in here. This is my limitation, so I have to go with, go with this. But I understand what you're saying, though, and I, and I agree with what you're saying. It's just to me, there's more than one way to go and get there. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> All right, my brother. Well, thanks for calling in. Appreciate the conversation. Oh, it's, oh, it's always a pleasure. But I want to go ahead and tell my piece. Uh, hey, hang on in there. Don't stress with that Corona thing. And that advice I uh, gave people: those are jewels. <laughs> those are jewels. We don't appreciate when we give each other information. But do the research. A uh, piece of blessing, but always appreciate you. Nothing but love and respect. All right. Thanks for the call. And love for our people. All right. All right. Peace. Peace. So, um, Miss McLove Jones, you can, <laughs> you can call. So McLove Jones said, I have the wrong idea of reality. So I'm interested in what reality is associated with. Um, uh, Myron said, is the virus in the tap water? Is the virus in the tap water? I don't know. Um, uh, any, you know what? How about I do this? Hi there, this is Alfonso. Oh wow, hi. You were, you're, um, I was just on my phone, and then I noticed that you could call it. Uh-huh. On. Hello? Yeah. Yeah, this is, so you're, you're starting to have a calling show. I saw the number, that's why I just dialed it. Okay, so you're on live right now, so what did you have on your mind? What did you want to say? Yeah, yeah, we're on live right now. Oh, wow. I had switched, <laughs> I had switched off. I didn't know that you guys were, were um, you were still, so I, you went back online. I just called you back. I, did, I thought you might have had something you wanted to add to the conversation. Well, I'm not listening to the show. So oh, you're not? I didn't have anything to answer because when Well, I, did, you, did you make a comment on. that says you have the wrong idea of, of reality? Well, I appreciate when you pointed that, that, that thing out 
um, about the dancing bears. And then you know what? When you pointed that out, I started looking at things quite differently. So that I, I appreciate that. Oh, about the bear, I, the bear on the bicycle. Oh, yeah. I, I never thought about it. And I'm like, you know, you're right. And then my, and my sister is thinking about other animals that are um, in K, you know. Our entertainers. And things like that. Yeah. And I was like, whoa. You know, I'm sure you know that they used to have black people in zoos in France. Yep. Louis Vuitton. And I'm just like, I can't even like Louie anymore. <laughs> hey. You know? Because of that. Well, a lot of people oh, wow. did a lot of things. But, a lot of things. But I think now it's but, just, it's about what we do for ourselves. Yeah, you're very, I, I, I was very attracted to, when I first saw you, when you first popped up on my phone, uh, maybe about a year ago, six months, I'm not quite sure. And I was like, well, let me see what this guy is going because he has a very unique look. <laughs> oh. And so, and I, I thought that was pretty interesting. Okay. Yeah. So, did, wow. you, did you did you have anything um, else you wanted to say? No, I just I'll turn back on to your show and start listening. I didn't realize you, huh. well, I appreciate you calling you, me you, back. Oh, okay. Right? And I enjoyed the article, so I'll email it to you um, when it's done, okay? Okay. When the publication's ready. Okay. All right, thank you for calling. All right, thanks, no problem. Bye-bye. Yeah. Okay, so that one line is open now if anybody else wants to say anything before we um shut this down. I, I do want to say that I appreciate you for tuning in. You can be doing any number of other things, even though... You know, a lot of us have a lot more time on our hands. I know I do. Um, I, uh, I'm i a licensed cosmetologist, and I do hair in the salon, men, women. And um, Yes. Hi there. Finally. How are you? I have no complaints. How are you? I'm so happy. Um, oh, so yeah, you the one that said um, I had the wrong yeah. idea about reality, right? Most of us do. So help so, us understand reality. Okay. And this might not be the easiest thing to swallow because reality is what we can see, hear, taste, and touch. But I promise you, reality is but chewed up gum. Because... Reality, everything that we call reality starts from a vibration. Everything. Just as, as the, in the beginning there was a word that everything comes from thought form. Right. Thoughts become things. Mm -hmm. So if you think you're a victim, you're only going to attract more reasons to feel victimized. Right. If, if you start to feel victorious, then you'll start attracting things to feel victorious about. Right. <clears throat> and if, if we continue to think the same old thoughts, things are changing no matter what, whether we like to accept it or not. It's only the thoughts that stay the same that makes the reality stay the same. Right. So we're literally in control of our own reality. We just don't realize it. So we continue to just look at what we can see and taste and touch and think that's all that there is. And that's, that's not how that's not how universal law works. Because right. there is a universal law. The same way there's a law of the speed of light. There's, there's a law. There's a law on how we work. There's a law on how we manifest. There's a law on how reality becomes what we call reality. Right. And it starts in the mind. You know this. Right. And we all do. Inherently, we all do. And when we hear the truth, we know it. There's something inside that tells you that this is true. And when you start to use it in practice, test the universe. T just test it, and it'll show you that this is what it is. If you keep, if you if you decide to to, to have a different thought, to create a different thought, more than likely before you go to sleep or as soon as you wake up, because you're in a highly subjectable state at those times of day, start to change those thoughts. And you will change your reality. Right. We have to see this whole, uh, what do you call it, 
you call it, curfew, quarantine, whatever it is, see it as an opportunity to become more. You don't have to know exactly what that more is, but as soon as you start to think of that, oh, this is an opportunity for me to become more, this is an opportunity for me to become greater, the universe will supply those needs. Right. They'll just come, little by little, more and more, and then, and then you show yourself what you can do. So reality is but chewed up gum because everything we wear, everything we see, everything we have on the physical plane is something that has to be thought in the mind first. It could not ever become reality if somebody didn't think of it. Right. So that's pretty much what I wanted to get out. Well, that makes sense to me. I just need you to explain one part that I'm yes. trying to understand. Help me understand yes. reality is chewed up gum. What does that mean? Because... to become a thought first. So what is new is the thought. What is uh, what is uh, reality is the, the byproduct of a thought. Okay, so you saying yeah, yeah, yeah. So the thought, it, the thought is the, the thought is the new thing. The thought is the fresh. New, okay? The thought is the fresh. The thought is the fresh piece of gum, and and the reality yes. is the chewed up piece of gum. Yes, sir. Exactly. Oh, okay, now I I can dig that. I can dig it's that. It's hard to conceive for a lot of people because. Again, reality is what's in our face on a day every day. But I promise you, everything, everything, everything starts in the mind. Everything absolutely. Situation. Yeah, everything absolutely starts in the mind. Absolutely, that's true. Okay. And if, 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 and like you, this, like you said, if you're operating from a a, a, pro, a, a oppressive state of mind, then you will bring oppression into your reality, right? Yeah. Hold on, you sound muffled. I said more and more opportunities to feel oppressed will, will come to you. That's the law of attraction. There's a law of attraction. Mm -hmm. We attract every single thing that comes into our life. Right. Everything. Every situation was, and, and it was attracted by you. It, it wasn't done on purpose, right. but, you know, they say ignorance to the law is no excuse. Right. Because the law is working for you no matter if you know it or not. Right. Hold on, hold it, baby. You sound you sound muffled again. Come on, come back, uh, please. Okay. Let me like take off these headphones. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I was just saying I don't want to be too biblical, but you know the Bible is, a, it, it is sort of like a personal story of, of each and every one of us. You just put the dots together in different ways. Um, but when the two become one, meaning the, the mind and emotion, when you think of a thing and it's attached with emotion, right. In such an um, invisible way, you're creating that thing. Right. And and in my mind and, and in my emotions, I create a, a better life for myself now that I know this. Right. Because the thing that when you know better, if you do better, you do better, that, it, that applies to every single person in every single situation in life. Right. It's... And when people don't do better, it's simply because they don't know better. And we need to have a little bit more compassion for them. Right. And like you said, when you know, you said something earlier about when you know who you are, you work from a place of compassion. Right. right. And, and now that I know more of who I am, I, I can I can feel compassion for everybody. Even when I feel like, man, you're on the wrong path, or man, you're talking nonsense. I, it, it, sometimes it's hard to pull it back, but... You know, I'm working on myself too every day. This is a this is a moment by moment, day by day thing to be right. to be um what do you say? I, I, I don't know it, it, to be changed, to be uh, to become a new to to take a new frame of mind. It, it it's not something you get a degree in. It's something that has to be worked on every day. Right. It's it, it, your thoughts it's to change to change the direction of your life or what you're manifesting in your life. If it's not if it if it doesn't work for you, um, that's not, that's like a, a runaway train. You can't just stop that and change your direction. That that's that has that's a process. You know what I mean? You have to do some slowing down in order to change those directions. So right, I want to have all all compassion for all people for all the time. I, I remember when I was in elementary school. You know, and they started teaching me about Martin 
Martin Luther King and slavery and wow, that's when the questions came. Like I, I knew from then when I met God, I have a million questions for you. And the fact that I now realize that I did not have to die to get those questions answered. I get those questions answered on a daily basis now. Mm-hmm. Life is amazing. Life is brand new to me. And and you said you were talking earlier about um things we can do to change our reality. Is that what you said? Yeah, we can improve the quality of... How do we figure out what to do? The the old saying, asking you shall receive, is real, people. It's really, really real. If you ask with your heart and your mind, I don't know if you want to call it God or if you want to call it the universe or if you want to call it source or if you want to call it infinite intelligence, we are all privy to that. All you need to do is ask the question and the answer will come. That made sense to me. Yeah, it's a fact. Yeah. I'm living proof. Yeah. I'm living proof. So, you know, I just want to send blessings to everybody. And I just want to let y'all know that we are safe. Like, this is, man, this will be something that we laugh, we sit back and laugh about later on. Like, just relax. Just let this, let this, let this itch pass and just relax. It's okay. We're fine. Let other people panic because we live in a collective consciousness, okay? Yeah, we're all individuals, but we live in a collective consciousness that we all add to. And there's people who are in a panic, and um, there are people who are not in a panic. And God bless those who can mm-hmm. stay calm, who can who can still feel good, who can be uh, unbothered because those people are, are giving us the security that we need. Right. And, and if we could all get on a a, a better feeling thought, that's all it takes. It, even if your thought is frustration, reach for a better better feeling thought. That's all it takes to change your reality. Just always reach for a better feeling thought. That's it. It's so simple. It's so simple. It sounds stupid. It sounds like it can't be real. It can't work. But I promise you, it does. Well, what makes what what makes what you're saying powerful is because when we feel bad, it's because we've reached for that thought. So, yeah. <laughs> you know. and, and that's, just, that's what it means really to turn, when the Bible says turn the other cheek, that doesn't mean, you know, let somebody trip all over you and you just walk away. That means when you're having these thoughts in your mind that don't make you feel good, think of something else. Right. Because it's feeling that gets the blessing. If you feel sick, you're going to be more sick. If you feel healthy, you, you, health will come to you. If you feel empowered, more reasons to feel empowered. You know how your mother used to say, you keep crying, I'm going to give you something to cry for. Well, guess what? The universe says, you keep being grateful and I'm going to give you some more to be grateful for. And that's a fact. So maybe we just all need to find something to be grateful for in this time. I appreciate your energy and your passion and your words because it's all <laughs> it all makes sense to me. Yes, God is good. He works through us, for us, and at us every moment of every day. And I'm so grateful to know that. Yeah. And I'm just sending everybody blessings and love. And just have a wonderful night. All right, you too. And I, I appreciate you. your your feedback on my comments. Um, it's, especially now since I have a little insight on where you're coming from. Because it makes sense to me. Yeah, yeah. So I you, didn't mean to offend. I just, I just, I was inspired. I was inspired to call tonight, and and when I'm inspired, I gotta move. Well, that's good. And you, you continue okay. moving. Okay. Thank All you. right. But have a good night, guys. All right. You too. Peace. Bye. So, um, the line is open. <laughs> if anybody else wants to call, um, you know, for me, I'm just here to. Uh, to give people a place to express themselves. I'm sure there are a lot of places for people to express their thoughts and their feelings, and but that's why I'm here, uh, to express mine and allow people to express theirs. <clears throat> um, one of the things she talked about was what I said earlier about the, the better we get to know ourselves, the more compassion we have for other people. That's just a fact of life. Because what happens is, you know, when we really start getting connected with ourselves, we can see what's going on with other people. We can see it and they won't even know we see it. But because of what I 
own experiences are and what we know about ourselves, we recognize it when it's being made manifest in others. So it's only natural for us to have more compassion. And so on the other side of that, for me, when I see people with very little compassion, I also feel like I'm looking at somebody or some people who really aren't connected to themselves, who really don't know themselves, who haven't, who have not spent any time with themselves trying to get an understanding of themselves. So <clears throat> I'm not out here. Um, even when I speak in reference to our historical relationship with white people, it is not for the purpose of um, smashing white people as much as it is for the purpose of us understanding ourselves and the reality associated with how we arrived in the condition we're in today and, and why we're operating with the thought process and consciousness we're operating with today. Some people reference the bear on the bicycle, and I feel the need to <clears throat> enlighten people on what they were speaking about. Because, you know, it's frustrating if you're listening to something and somebody keeps referring to something and you don't know what they're referring to. So, um, when I talked about the bear on a bicycle, I'm going to make this a little shorter than I normally do if, you, if you're already familiar with this story. But when I talk about the bear on the bicycle, uh, the bear, I talk about the bear being in the circus. And if you ever seen that bear riding the bicycle in a circle in the circus, when we look at the bear, we never, or, or any of those animals in the circus, we, we used to always look at them with compassion. We never looked at the bear and said, look at that stupid bear riding that bike in a circle. How come he don't use his claws and just slap the circus trainer and run to the woods or something? We never think like that. We always have more compassion. And we don't call the bear stupid. We're like, damn, you know. Some of us are entertained by the bear riding the bike, and some of us look and say, well, damn, that bear really shouldn't have to be riding a bike. So when I talk about the bear on the bicycle in the circus, I ask the question, <clears throat> what if the bear went to the trainer and said, hey, I want freedom? And the trainer said, okay, well, what do you want? And the lions and tigers and elephants join the bears and say, yeah, we want freedom. And the trainer said, okay, well, what do you want? <laughs> and the bear said, We want to live where you live. We want to have the things that you have. We want to dress the way you dress. We want to eat what you eat. In their demand for freedom, the animals decided they wanted to have what the bear dress, how the bear dress, eat what the, what the, what the trainer eats, live where the trainer lives. Anybody on the outside looking in would say, wow, you know, the bear and its demand for freedom is demonstrating that it is still out of its natural mind. Now, after just maybe four years of training, you have a bear that's assisting with training its cubs to be prepared to ride a bicycle in a circle. So each generation, new generation of animals are easier and easier to acclimate to the circus reality. And so as we see, when the bear demands freedom, the bear in its demand for freedom demonstrates that it is out of its natural mind. Because once we see the bear on the bicycle, the bear is out of his natural mind because that's not what bears do. Bears would never pick up a bike in the forest and say, hey, I want to learn how to ride it. Just wouldn't happen. So when we see the bear on the bicycle, the bear is clearly out of his natural mind. And when we look at the bear, we look at it with compassion. We don't call the bear stupid because the bear is not using his big claws to slap the trainer. We understand the bear has been reconditioned. The bear has a reconditioned consciousness. So now when we slide that over to black people in America, they didn't have us 
for four years. They had us for 400. Generation after generation after generation after generation for 400 years. So the question is, after four years, you understand the bear is functioning with a consciousness created by the trainer. Well, after 400 years, whose consciousness do you think we functioning with? Whose consciousness do you think we're operating with? If you understand the bear situation. So after 400 years, we're functioning with a consciousness created by white people. This is why I talked about that, that um, cornerstone foundation for life that we move from. Competition, conflict, and confrontation, a struggle to overcome, and a need to be validated by white people. That is because we're functioning with a consciousness white people created. That's why we are no more than entertainers and servants in this society as long as we're not moving from a life affirmation foundation which is understanding life preserving life and improving the quality of life for the whole so now here we come after 400 years of functioning with a consciousness created by white people generation after generation after generation and we are demanding our freedom and this is not a criticism to the, this is not a criticism of the civil rights movement, but it's, a, it's an analysis and it is a critique. It's something that we have to look at because our ancestors didn't know everything. They were doing the best they knew how, what they had, and they came up with a plan and they executed their plan. And in their demand for freedom, they said, we want to live where you live. We want to be able to go to hotels where you go to hotels. We want to be able to eat where you eat. We want to be able to have the things that you have. We want to be able to live in the neighborhoods you live in. We want to be able to send our kids to school where your kids go to school. Well, the question is, if in our demands... Nothing includes reconnecting with our own history and our own historical context and reality. Like that bear. If the bear is in there demanding to live and operate like the trainer and the bear never demands to run and travel two, three, four, five, four, fifteen 15 miles a day and slap fish out the water and get stung stealing honey from bees or whatever bear do, bears do, hibernate. If the bear's not demanding any of that, the bear has got to be out of his natural mind where, well, look at us. When we were demanding freedom, all of our freedom depended on the cooperation of white people. All of our freedom depended on us being able to do what white people did, have what white people have, go to school where white people went to school, work with white people, integration, all of this stuff. And in our demand for freedom, we demonstrated that we were still out of our natural minds. And we have yet to address that. We have yet to address the fact that we are functioning with a consciousness created by white people over 400 plus year period. And the fact that we are out of our natural minds. We have not addressed that. We celebrate the civil rights movement. We run around here talking about bragging about the first black person. Anytime we brag about the first black anything, we confirm that our standard for what is best for us as white people. This is not a knock on white people. This is a fact about our consciousness. Anytime we stand proud of being the first black, the first black to do this, the first black to integrate that, the first black, anytime we brag about the first black, we confirm that our standards are white people. These are small things that show that we are out of our natural minds. It's not a critique. Well, this is, I'm not criticizing the civil rights movement, but I'm saying where it directed us. My standard is not to be able to have what white people have and do what white people do. 
My standard is connected to making history. To a major degree, we are people. We have so many things distracting us, but the two major things distracting us right now, number one, we're functioning with the civil rights movement mindset, which is to be trying to be equal to white people. It never makes sense to be equal to anybody for any reason. Any reason, any reason, it never makes sense to want to be equal to anybody. For any reason, ever. We are born into this universe with our own life assignment. And if I'm looking over there trying to be equal to somebody, then I'm removing myself from my own life assignment. And I can only be a servant for their life assignment. We are not born to be equal to anybody on any level for any reason. That third part of that, that Cornerstone Life Foundation that I talk about, which is number one, understanding life, number two, preserving life, and number three, improving the quality of life for the whole. That right there, that third one, improving the quality of life for the whole, that, that, that third cornerstone for life right there, if we aren't, if we aren't doing that, man, then we're not really participating life in life. We're just existing until we die. We're just existing until we die. So no, it never makes sense to want to be equal to anybody for any reason. It doesn't matter who says it. And I also believe that as long as we spend our time complaining about white people, we are wasting our lives because it's not about white people. It's about what we are doing. If we're out here arguing with each other, then we have to work on our consciousness so we're not arguing. If we're out here killing each other, then that's what we need to focus on. If we're out here operating against one another for any reason, envy, jealousy, all of any of these other things, then we have to work on us. I think our focus should be us. And the more we work on us, the better off we'll be for ourselves. And the less relevant and significant what white people are doing or aren't doing will be for us. So that's just, you know, that's just my comments, my thoughts. And um, like I said, tonight, I wanted to, you know, give people an opportunity to talk about how they're feeling in regards to what's going on. And I also wanted to help people understand why I said black people are going, uh, what are black people going to do since entertainers and servants are no longer working and help people understand what that meant when I said that. And I'll share with you what I have um, decided or discovered that my life assignment is right now. One of the things that I see that we have biggest problem with is how we interact with one another. And I have decided that it is my responsibility to travel travel the state, the country, and the world, sharing information about harmonious and productive communication. That's what I do. It's something that I've been studying and been focusing on and been uh, really living out my understanding and experiences for the last 20 years. Um, I'm also in the process of writing a book since I have so much time on my hands. I think I finally get it finished. Um, it's called The Roots of a Tree, um, McGriff's Unique Approach to Harmonious and Productive Communication. And um, communication, I'm always open to make it happen, especially now. Uh, so that's what I do. And that's what I'll do until uh, the universe moves me to do something different. But right now, that's my focus. Harmonious and productive communication, that is how I would like to make a contribution to improving the quality of who I am and contributing to improving the quality of who we are as I share this information about harmonious and productive communication. And so 
when I come back tomorrow evening, my goal will be 8 o'clock tomorrow evening, uh, Tuesday. Tomorrow's Tuesday. I'm losing track of the days. My, uh, I will be speaking in reference to sharing some aspect of what I call harmonious and productive communication. So if nobody else wants to call in, um, this show is a lot longer than it'll be tomorrow, but I just wanted, I had a lot of things I wanted to share and um, people had some things on their minds, so this one is kind of long, but I don't think it'll be as long tomorrow. But anyway, uh, we'll let the universe make that decision. So, uh, as I always say, I absolutely love you. I absolutely love you. And I always will. And I will never, ever give up on my people. Ever. I um, move with a certain amount of compassion for our people. I'm not uh, out here trying to smash and criticize our people. I don't try to present myself as woker than anybody else because we all sleep in as far as I'm concerned. The woke person knows everything. And then whoever knows everything, let me know. Other than that, everybody else is working to wake up. I'm working to wake up. I believe those of us who have a desire to wake up are working to wake up. But for me, the woke person is the one that knows everything. <laughs> so, I am Alfonso McGriff III. This is Make It Plain slash Alfonso Speaks. And if you haven't joined my Alfonso Speaks page, I would like you to also uh, like that page as well. It's, it's called Alfonso Speaks. And I try to do the lives on that page as well. So anyway, I am Alfonso McGriff III. This is Make It Plain and Alfonso Speaks. I thank you for tuning in. You could have been doing any number of other things, but you chose to hang out with me. And um, I'll never take that for granted. Thank you very much. Peace. I'm out.